If I could find more of this, I will have big diamonds. Right there at the tip of my finger, you can see that shine. Oh, nice. Look at that facet right there. Oh my gosh, wow. Oh, look how bright that thing is. I think it's gonna hold a charge. Here we go. Oh my gosh, wow. Welcome back to another adventure, miners, prospectors, and rock counters. It's always good to see you back at the channel. And if you're new to my channel, I hope you like what you see in this video and you decide to subscribe. I am back at the Crater of Diamond State Park. I'm at what you call Tater Island. This is all material that was dug up around 2000-ish and the Crater of Diamonds dug up a lot of material from way down around the park. They would get the gravel layers that are six to seven, eight feet down and they spread it all across this area at one time. This was loaded and it still is today. You can see after this hard rain we just had, there's gravel everywhere. And we call it Tater Island just because of all the gravel. A lot of the jaspers you'll see almost look like a potato. So this right here is what we call Tater Island. So in this video, I'll be working Tater Island. We're gonna fill up 12 buckets, get them washed, get the centers made and pick out some diamonds. This area is known for three carrots. There's been a lot of three carrots, two carrots. It's just a matter of time before somebody's going to get another one. This is the Arkansas Diamond 20,000 subscriber giveaway. We've reached 20,000 subscribers, so we're going to have another Arkansas Diamond giveaway. All you got to do is leave a comment on this video, be subscribed. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up button. You know, it's been raining for days, and I'm actually so far doing pretty good with the bigger wagon. My other wagon was so muddy i had to drag it out of here i've got to the north wash and i had to turn around and it took me one hour to get from there all the way to the boot wash so hopefully this bigger wagon is going to help a lot better let's take a look at the clip with my wagon full of mud I'm trying to figure out why i cannot go and that's why look at that This mud used to not do that out here. I don't know what the hell is going on with this stuff. And this is my morning I'm trying to get my wagon back to the parking lot. And some of you may wonder, do I come out here during the rain? Heck no. I come out here after the rain. I'm just dragging my wheel. That wheel's locked up with mud. Perfect. I made it all the way to my cage, which is by the south wash. And the mud did not build up like last time. All this stuff out. That's full of water. Nasty water. Cow lick supplement. Decided I'm gonna take 12 buckets, go get them filled up with material, get them washed. We're gonna get some centers made today. Let's hopefully get a diamond on video or two or three or four. Still have buckets to wash. This is some James Archer gravel. I got 18 buckets of it, or 15 buckets to wash. Here's what it looks like. That's the small classifier. Here's the larger, really good looking gravel, man. Oh, look at that, it's just loaded with gravel. All right, I'm gonna park my wagon here. I gotta carry everything to the east drain right there's the okie dokie shovel that's probably really muddy but i might try to go down it just to get my buckets down there but as far as carrying buckets up this might be a nightmare so i may have to carry them by hand all the way across the field 
to here then i can use the wagon take them to the wash this right here is what we used to call tater island had lots of jasper at one time it was covered in just tater rocks and gravel i mean solid but you know after years have gone by here's some good stuff right here look at all that let's nice build up a gravel right here too i have to scoop some of that up this thing was spitting out three carrots for a while all this material came down from the gravel layers that the crater of diamonds dug up with the backhoe and they spread it across the field maybe it was in the 2003 time somewhere in there but uh definitely thinned out but right now i'm seeing lots of gravel look at all that tater island this looks pretty good right here this right here looks really good Gonna remove this larger rock don't look like much it's gonna be stuck to it Take a closer look at where I'm working so you can get an idea. Yeah, I got a couple scoops out of here, pretty much a bucket. And then I came over to this washout coming off Tater Island. And this one is, seems really good. I mean, it's just full of gravel. So what I'm doing, I'm scraping to the hard pan, which is this, and getting all the material that's sitting on top of that. And there can be cavities in that hard pan. And what this is, is Bareka. I'm going to scrape this whole drain. Because the diamonds are going to fall in these lower spots. That's our advantage, is working these low spots. You work these low spots, you'll get some diamonds. Here's a really good buildup up here. Lots of small rocks. Right, we got two four buckets filled up out of the 12 what i'm going to do now is kind of do some scouting and then set my bucket down where i want to get the gravel i mean really there's just this whole stretch right here all of this right here and what we looked at a minute ago all that it just keeps going up there's hundreds of buckets of material just in these low spots if you can see those indicators you'll have a better chance of getting just heavy minerals which could lead to a diamond okay i filled up a bucket of pretty good material right here in this trench scraping down to this hard pan right here above it lots of gravel in it that's all you want to look for two more buckets to fill up i'm gonna get these two right here here's that spot we looked at earlier we get all that Somehow, I miscounted. We have 13 buckets to wash. I may just go grab another bucket and make it 14 because it's a lot easier to carry two buckets than one bucket across the field. So let me go grab another bucket, fill it up, and we'll be ready to wash. Oh man, they're about 70 pounds each. Whew. Finally, the last two buckets. 
All right, got all the buckets carried to the south wash. Time to get bucket number one done. Got bucket number one washed. Let's scrape this bottom classifier and see if we got any heavies. Oh my gosh, look at that. Loaded with heavy minerals. Oh my gosh, what is that? Oh. Yeah, it's looking good. Nice. Let me know if you see a diamond. Wow. Oh, that right there looks pretty. Right there. All right, I'm gonna keep on going. Can't wait to see these centers. Here's my concentrated material. It's time to take all this, put it in a bucket. Because a couple more dumps, it'll be full. I don't want to lose any material. So I'll scoop all that up, put it in a bucket, and keep going. Bucket number eight. You can see it's a lot of Bereka and mud. Remember, side to side. Paint the house. You can even wax on or wax off. Lots of gravel. Lots and lots of gravel. This is number 12 and it's loaded with gravel. I couldn't believe this one had so much gravel. Look at all that. This gravel right here is the gravel we are looking for. If I can find more of this, we will get big diamonds. Let's go ahead and scrape the bottom classifier and see what kind of heavies we got. See? Look at that. If I could find more of this, I will have big diamonds. And there's more out there. Definitely be going back getting more buckets. I brought this board to lay over this table. That way I don't lose any of my material falling through the cracks. Let's get some centers made. They're going to be awesome.
went ahead and laid out 24 more buckets to fill up. I'm gonna get these filled up, get them washed, and hopefully get a diamond. That's gonna be 48 buckets of material washed from Tater Island. Working on getting the buckets off the field. 24. <laughs> so it would be 38 buckets total, not 48. So hopefully we'll get a diamond out of that. Here's everything from Tater Island, and I'll be using my concentrating centering device. And a different angle, here's all the buckets. And the other two are from a hole and I have really good confidence we'll find several diamonds in that material be looking out for that video okay, I'm gonna go ahead and finish making my centers and I'll bring y'all back in once I get them all the way down the mats I want to thank all my YouTube supporters and patreons because of you I was able to get these rubber mats they're perfect to make your centers can take them to the diamond mine with you flip your material and you can save all your material if you want to save it you just scoop it all up you'll be able to fold these up and pour it in a bucket so once again thank you so much here's the first three centers from tater island and they're looking pretty good that's for sure let me know if you see a diamond beautiful centers all the good indicators like hematite spinel garnets piece of metal lots of good indicators off tater island just a matter of time we'll have a diamond may already have one i just gotta find it and all that once it dries everything else will dull out and the diamonds won't They'll keep their clarity, and we'll be able to spot them a lot better. Amazing centers. And that was a quarter of a bucket. We still have all of that to go through. All right, going over the first bucket. Eh. That's about a bucket and a half, if that. Checking out this center right here. Let me know if you see anything a little different than what we normally see in our centers. A little grasshopper. It's about a day old. Aww. How cute. Little bitty thing. Oh. And so far, Lowe's has a diamond. We've got one more Home Depot. That was the last Lowe's bucket. Will Green have a diamond? 
Will the gray have a diamond? Or will the white have the diamond? Right about where my finger is, at the tip of my finger, there is a small garnet. It is small. It's right there at the tip of my finger. About mid frame, middle of the frame. Round number five. I looked at all the centers over here and right here. And we have a diamond, everyone. Check it out. I'm gonna let you try and find it first. So let me know if you see the diamond. I'll go up the center real slow and you can just kinda see if you can see it. Do you see it? Yep, right there, the tip of my finger, that silver looking metallic shine. All right, we got a diamond off Tater Island. Right there, that metallic shine. The tip of my finger. That sun really helps it. Okay, I believe that's diamond 43. I have to go through all my printouts, but that could be diamond 43. Let's get the spoon and scoop it out because that right there is a diamond you definitely don't want to use tweezers on. If you got a two carat nut, yeah, you can go ahead and grab it with the tweezers. Because if I go to use my fingers, it's just going to sink down deeper into the gravel. All right, there it is. I'm gonna get the spoon. Oh, nice. Look at that facet right there. And see how it's sticking to those other rocks. Little diamonds will stick to things. See how it's still it's, it's stuck to it. And that diamond will stick to your finger. See how that diamond's stuck to that rock? There's a proof that diamonds will stick when they're wet. And when they're small like this now when i touch it and move all this around it should break it free there we go all right there's the diamond yes a beautiful diamond from tater island awesome and that thing is really nice check that out look at those facets Good clarity, nice and clean, not much carbon. And right there's a little bit of carbon, that black spot. Other than that, it's a nice clean diamond. Almost flawless. Oh. And I just dropped the flawless diamond. Oh, here it is. It's right there. So you can see the difference compared to all those other rocks and that diamond there's the diamond and there's everything else a little wet so everything's still giving a shine but it's nothing like that and the facets aren't smooth and rounded we got several more buckets to work two four six at least six more bucks to work. Round number seven, down to just the gray bucket and the white bucket from Tater Island. Didn't see anything on those three, but right here on this fourth one, we have a really nice garnet right there, right there at the end of my shovel. Right there at the end of the spoon see the red dark red color 
good one. Let's see if we can't move that out a little bit. To... There we go. It might have helped. Here's the diamond under the microscope. This is how they determine if it's a real diamond from the crater of diamonds. If it doesn't have those facets, they will not register the diamond or the stone. It's a pretty diamond. Let's take a look at it under the UV light. Looks like it turned out to be 11 point. And there's the diamond. Let's hit this with the UV light and test to see if it's fluorescent. Because a lot of the diamonds at the crater of diamonds will fluorescent. Here is the UV light that I'll be using. You can see right there. Very high powered UV light. Let me turn the light off. Oh my gosh, it is. I can, it's a blue, it glows blue. It looks like it's turning blue. Here's another diamond. This is my 43rd diamond. Came out of a hole. Let's see if it's fluorescent. There we go. There's the side with the facet. The other side doesn't have a good facet like that one. Oh yeah, see it's not even fluorescent. You see it doesn't change. Instantly, I have the UV light on. I even have this light on. Let me turn this off. But this thing is blue. Look at that. Look how that diamond just... Oh my gosh, wow. That's probably the best fluorescent diamond I have ever found at the Crater of Diamonds. This is awesome. See, this one on the left doesn't even do anything. But man, this thing just... This could hold a charge and could probably keep glowing. I'm going to turn both lights off. And see if we can get this diamond to stay glowing like that. Sometimes the diamonds will keep glowing... Sometimes it's just for a flash and your eyes can barely catch it. And then sometimes they will keep glowing just like that for seconds. Kind of green. Green. That one's like green when I directly, but this one's blue. All right, let's turn off the lights. Okay, the lights are off and the diamond is already glowing. So I want to put the light right on it. For a couple seconds and we will see if it will hold a charge sometimes it'll continue to keep glowing I right, want to turn the light off oh, look how bright that thing is I think it's gonna hold a charge here we go oh my gosh wow oh look at that it's starting to fade oh my gosh wow that was so cool let's do it again this diamond will hold a charge and glow at night. That's how awesome these Arkansas diamonds are compared to any diamond in the world. I have many fluorescent diamonds and none of them will do this. Hold a charge that long. Alright, I'm going to turn the light off. Here we go. Oh my gosh, wow. Look at that. That is so cool. I'm zooming in and out and just fading away to where I can't focus. And then it's starting to slowly just, it's still glowing. It is still glowing. I can still see that thing. Look at that. It's just glowing. It has been seconds. Wow. I mean, it's just glowing. That thing just... That thing just stays glowing. It's still going and glowing. Wow, I mean, it's starting to fade. 
<laughs> that is crazy. Man. One more time. I wish you could focus on it for a little bit longer. All right, here we go. Oh, it's so cool. And then it fades. And with the naked eye, it's just amazing. The video is one thing, but looking at it in person is something else. It just glowing. Okay, so there you have it. These Arkansas diamonds are fluorescent and they can continue to glow if you have the correct UV light. This is a long wave UV light that I got off eBay. Wow, that is so awesome. Glowing diamonds. Not too many diamonds will do this. That's a 100% fluorescent. And I take that back. This other one, it's fluorescent as well. It's a green fluorescent. It just doesn't hold a charge and isn't as bright as that one. I mean, look at that. But that is a green fluorescent diamond. Both of my latest diamonds are fluorescent. And one of them stays glowing. That's just unreal. And slowly fades off. It's been over 10 seconds and it's still glowing. So there you have the experiment with the long wave UV light. These diamonds are fluorescent. Now we're gonna look at some bigger diamonds like my 42 point and a 27 point I believe. And this one's almost a texahedrahedron. And this one came out of the east drain with one other diamond that was also a 42 point. And let's see if these diamonds will fluorescent. And as you can see, this one has a little bit. And this diamond over here has nothing. But this one definitely fluorescent blue. Wow, that just is crazy right there. Gosh, look at that. This one is not fluorescent. Here is an example of a diamond that, of an Arkansas diamond that isn't fluorescent at all. See that one there? Oh, it's a little bit is that bottom corner. Turn the light off. And now you can really see how this one just doesn't, just doesn't do anything with the light at a distance. See, coming to it, nothing. See how these are glowing? So you can see the one on the back, it just glowing. That one's glowing on the bottom right here. And this one is doing nothing. So there you have a non-fluorescent diamond compared to three diamonds that are fluorescent and this one just just can't get enough of that one let's see if this one will hold a charge let it shine on the diamond for a little bit all right i'm gonna turn the light off oh my gosh wow oh incredible that thing like lit up even brighter that thing had a flash like a an electric spark <laughs> What in the heck is going on here? That was crazy. Let's do that again. Wow, that is so cool. Oh my gosh. Awesome. 
and this diamond back here is always glowing. So there you have a good example of fluorescent Arkansas diamonds that will fluorescent under a long wave UV light. The diamonds that won't. We've seen a diamond that fluorescents unlike no other diamond. And it's just a matter of time. If you follow my method, look for the gravel, you will also be finding diamonds. And always dig where your gut tells you to dig. If you made it this far in the video, you are a true Diamond Miner Ivans fan. And I can't thank you all enough for the support. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be able to make these videos. And I want to give back as much as I can to my YouTubers. Here is the Arkansas Diamond that I'll be giving away. Let's take a look at it out of the case. Also, this beautiful quartz crystal from Arkansas. Nice and clear. This one also glows blue under the UV light. So the winner will be getting a fluorescent Arkansas diamond that's pretty rare. And you can get your long wave UV light and do your own testing with your gemstones and other minerals. All right, be sure and leave a comment and you're entered to win. And you must be subscribed because I do check. The winner of this diamond will be announced on my YouTube community tab, Facebook page, Instagram. Here's the diamond sealed up in the case. Once the channel gets to 50,000 subscribers, I'll give away a bigger diamond over a quarter carat, white, gem quality, tetrahexahedron formation. Very rare. Check out this tree. It has some dried up mushrooms attached to it. Massive.